and every moment now we are going to be racing and it's go everybody away it's a very narrow straight here as they rush down towards turn one downhill that right hander who's going to get into it first who's attacking well thank you james allen and to answer your question mark weber will get into it first ralph schumacher has moved into the lead of the grand prix and Kimi Räikkönen is up into second place and Button is now in third. Hang on, what is that? Is that a Ferrari engine blow up? That is, um, that is, a f wow, the Ferraris are not bulletproof after all. Jensen Button has now lost fifth place because his engine has gone as well. Although they're still side by side, they've got a tell from the onboards actually. No, Montoya, no he has lost a place. They were side by side for several corners, I believe. Um, I made the mistake of going on the onboard, but there you go. So now, the running order is Ralph Schumacher, Kimi Räikkönen, Michael Schumacher, Montoya. But anyway, Ralph Schumacher coming around the last corner to win the 2002 Hungarian Grand Prix. And I think that's his second race win in a row now, actually. Yes, it is. Kimi Räikkönen will take second, the best finish for McLaren so far this season, and Michael Schumacher has taken third, Montoya in fourth, David Coulthard fifth, and Jarno Trulli will take sixth. It's the Belgian Grand Prix and round 14 of the 2002 FIA Formula One World Championship. This circuit is situated deep in the Ardennes Forest and remains a firm favourite with virtually every driver on the grid. A true driver's circuit, the magnificent Eau Rouge Corner is seen as the ultimate test of skill and determination, and every year drivers attempt to take this lightning-fast curve flat out. Because of its geographical location, the track is often subject to sudden rain showers that can have a massive impact on the race. In 1998, Damon Hill scored the Jordan team's historic first victory, with Ralph Schumacher completing a perfect weekend for the team, coming second and securing their first and so far only 1-2 finish. In 2000, we saw Mika Hakkinen perform possibly Formula 1's most impressive overtaking manoeuvre ever, passing Ferrari's Michael Schumacher with Ricardo Zonta in his BAR Honda right in between them. Right then guys, it's PSL here and I'm here for part 14 of my Formula 1 2002 reverse grid race series and I'm here on the grid for the Belgian Grand Prix and this is my 36th reverse grid race video on my channel and the first one at Spa. It's taken me 36 videos to finally do one at Spa but anyway yeah so it's almost like James Allen knew that because he was talking for ages about Spa just going on and on and on so um yeah so it's almost like he knows this is a special occasion but yeah on to the grid the game says it's Alex Young on pole position, now obviously because you guys voted in favour of me including the real life driver changes, that is Anthony Davidson. I believe this is his last race with the team because um, because after this point Alex Young comes back from qualifying training because he was sent to qualifying training for failing to meet the 107% rule on too many occasions in the season so Alex Young will be back for the rest of the season after this race I believe. Then it's Weber. Both Saubers really had a poor qualifying, I have no idea what happened to them with Heifeld once you reverse the grid, Heifeld in 3rd and Massa in 4th, I have no idea why they qualified so badly but this could be a really good opportunity for them because in recent races Sauber have fallen behind Renault and really recently McLaren in the Constructors Championship. If they have a decent race here which they're in a prime position to do that they could overtake both of those teams in the Constructors' Championship. Below that, not really much to say really, just the usual stuff. Um, yeah, it's not really much to say, I mean both Jaguars are away down the field so we might not see too much from them. And then yeah, Michael Schumacher at the back, excluding both Arrows because both Arrows, um, obviously at this point in time they don't exist anymore, they went bankrupt and uh, well I don't really quite know what state Arrows win at this point because obviously behind the scenes there are all sorts of attempted buyouts. I have no idea what the exact situation was in the Belgian Grand Prix but to all intents and purposes Arrows are done at this point in time. So yeah Arrows are at the back. Not going. We're just going to pretend that they don't exist um, because well because 
they're at the back, and um, they didn't race in this Grand Prix in real life, so um, I know it's quite confusing, and I know some people have commented in previous episodes saying, you know, why don't you just stick arrows at the front, but, you know, I like to be authentic to real life, even if it does create a little bit of confusion, but anyway, that is, to be fair, that is what you guys voted for, is you want me to stick people who didn't qualify, or didn't race rather, at the back of the grid, so that's their punishment. But yeah, anyway, moving back up to the front where we've got Alex Young, just a reminder, Anthony Davidson. So yeah, we've got both Minardis with both Salvas just behind. This could be an exciting debut reverse grid race at spa franc It's Sunday afternoon and you're joining us for round 14 of the 2002 FIA Formula 1 World Championship here at spa franc for the Belgian Grand Prix. Last year, after lengthy delays at the start, Michael Schumacher eventually won for Ferrari, with David Coulthard second for McLaren Mercedes. The real star of the race, however, was young Italian Giancarlo Fisichella, who defied the critics of the Renault Power Benetton team by grabbing the final spot on the podium with an absolutely outstanding drive to third, much to the delight of his team and the fans. Mika Hakkinen came fourth, and Rubens Barrichello finished the race fifth for Ferrari. Jean Alesi, who took Frentzen's vacant seat at Jordan Honda, continued his strong form and duly delivered the final point for the team, thereby continuing his impressive streak of finishing every race of the season at the same time. It's almost time for the annual mad dash down to the last horse hairpin. There are as many lines through there as there are drivers. Four lights, five lights, any moment now, any moment now, we're off. Up through the gears, first gear, second gear, third gear, accelerating hard, brake hard, take a narrow line, take a wide line, just get yourself through that source without any damage and we're away. Right, thank you, James Allen. And Nick Heifelt has already stormed off into the lead of the Belgian Grand Prix. Anthony Davidson is in second, Takuma Sato in third, but we got Felipe Massa, who is looking like he's going to move up towards the front, going up to Eau Rouge, and I think potentially he has done it or we can't really see though because we got three abreast ahead of Fisichella Sato, Davidson and Massa and it looks like actually this could be an interesting one I mean Sato's got the inside line but Massa is significantly ahead and Michael Schumacher is already up into fourth place just streaming on through the field already just blitz past Davidson and it looks like Fisichella is in sixth Raikkonen is in fifth Okay, I don't know where Raikkonen and Schumacher came from, but boy have they moved there. They have moved through the field pretty quickly. Fizzy Keller is out of it already. More bad luck for Jordan there. I'll tell you what, it's amazing it isn't Takuma Sato. So, it's Heifeld. Massa has got to defend for Michael Schumacher already. This is ridiculous. And it looks like, no, Massa cannot defend for him, so Michael Schumacher... This has got to be the most dominant we've ever seen him. I mean, Schumacher was dominant in France, but, well, technically, he was just lucky in France. He, he was lucky that his brother broke down. This is pure dominance. I mean, Kimi Raikkonen has done well, but not as well. We've still got a Minardi holding off from, oh, God, there's a Jaguar, Williams, the other Ferrari. It's, there's everyone there. Coulthard has cleared both Minardis. He's up into ninth. So, as it stands... Nick Heifeld is leading by a few seconds, but, you know, it will not take Michael Schumacher long to close that down. Ralph Schumacher is now in third. He's appeared out of nowhere. Raikkonen is still in fifth, and someone is in sixth. It's not Jarno Trulli. It is, as a matter of fact, um, it is David Coulthard. No, it's Jensen Button. So Raikkonen is still in fifth. He's got to get past Massa. This should be relatively academic. I mean, we're talking a Mercedes engine versus, I believe, Sauber running a an old Ferrari engine, I believe. Well, and I know the Sauber is... I might be wrong in saying this, but I believe the Sauber is, in this kind of era of Formula 1, sort of a customer Ferrari to some extent. I mean, they kind of... They had a little partnership going, Sauber and Ferrari. 
um, with a, a partnership, as close a partnership as you could have without breaking the rules at that time. So Raikkonen is still behind Massa. Button is actually closing up to this field. Michael Schumacher is all over the back of Heifeld. Ralph Schumacher in third. So we got both Salbers simultaneously coming under attack. And Massa, he has lost out to Kimi Raikkonen. What about Heifeld and Michael Schumacher? Two Germans battling out. And we're coming towards, not the bus stop chicane, towards the old final couple of corners at Spa. And it looks like Schumacher's got the inside line. And it, whoa! Was he taken out by Nick Heifeld? I believe he might have been. Either that or he suddenly lost control. That's really weird. What happened there? So Heifeld was in first. Going around Blanchemont. He's now in second. So I mean Schumacher's ahead. Not massively ahead. But I believe Heifeld took out Michael Schumacher. The controversy. The dirty play from Sauber. I know Heifeld is still waiting for a win. He got a second place in Monaco. A very thoroughly deserved second place. I know he's desperate for a win. But you can't take out Michael Schumacher. Especially when you're a fellow German. It just wouldn't sit well with your... um. With the fellow Germans. Ralf Schumacher, it looks like. Yeah, Ralf Schumacher has overtaken his brother. So we got the Schumacher battle going on behind Heifeld. Kimi Räikkönen is in fourth. Massa still just about in fifth. But Button is coming under threat from Coulthard. So, looks like Ralf Schumacher has pulled out significantly from Michael Schumacher. So that shows the straight line speed that Williams has got with that BMW engine. And though he hasn't passed... Heifeld just yet, but it is just a matter of time. Michael Schumacher waiting in the wings, waiting for something to happen. And it looks like, yep, yeah, Ralph Schumacher going into no name. He has got past Nick Heifeld. Actually, they're side by side. And he's got Michael Schumacher all up behind him. A three-way battle going into Puan. And Heifeld has made contact with Michael Schumacher yet again. I mean, regardless... It's Ralf Schumacher leading, Michael Schumacher second, Heifeld third. It's an all-German top three. Kimi Räikkönen is in fourth. Massa somehow is in fifth. And Coulthard got past Button to get into sixth. But Barrichello ain't too far behind either. And I believe going into... I don't know what you would call the final couple of corners. It's, it's not the bus stop chicane. It's just... Let's just say it's the final chicane. And Coulthard all up behind Felipe Massa... And this should be... Oh, the Barrichello is making the move. And it looks like, no, actually, Coulthard has been able to retain 6th place ahead of Barrichello. But going into La Source, I think... Oh, no, Coulthard's got the inside line. And he's going to... I thought I thought he was going to make a diving move on Massa then. But he hasn't done that. Barrichello's now going to get the run on Coulthard. And this is only for 6th place, believe it or not. Montoya is in 8th, so he's the last of the top drivers to... Um, to make his way through the field. Barrichello still behind David Coulthard. And actually Coulthard is getting the run on Massa. So it looks like Massa could drop out of the points anytime soon. So you have Coulthard. Is he going to make the move? No, but we've got a, a four-car train literally going in a line. What about further upfield? Have we missed out on anything? Not really. Michael Schumacher is keeping up but not catching his brother. Coulthard, it looks like he's going to make a move on Massa. Montoya has got past Barrichello, and it looks like Montoya, probably one of the most aggressive overtakers. We saw it in Nürburgring, and we're seeing it here, because Montoya, in the space of a few corners, has got past Barrichello, Coulthard, and Massa. I mean, that's one thing in the McLaren. I would say the McLaren, one thing I've thought of in the past few races is the McLaren's got raw pace, but it can't... What on earth has happened there? What was that? That was, I believe, Rubens Barrichello going into the back of a stationary Ralph Schumacher and flipping. I thought the crash we had in Spain, I thought that crash in Spain was unbeatable. That was... Wow. I'm, lit I'm staggered. Absolutely. So Ralph Schumacher was leading, and I think once again the BMW engine just let him down. So, yeah, his engine goes, and then, so, right, no, Heifel gets by, so does that person, I don't know who it is, and there's Barrichello, 
who goes steaming into the back of Raul Schumacher. I think we've got the thumbnail shot. I, we've got to see this on board from uh, from Barrichello. I'm absolutely stunned. I just... This has got to be the race of the season. Surely there's been so much action. But Barrichello, just coming around the last sector... I mean, that was ridiculous. Um... One last time, one last time, from Barrichello, um, I don't know whether, as going on the logic of the game, I don't think Barrichello's retired, because I don't think his car has got terminal damage. The problem is, though, is he's upside down, so he ain't going to be, oh, he won't be scoring points, I'll tell you that for one. But that's just utterly stupendous, that is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. That has got to be one of the best things that's happened in any of my videos ever. That's got to be... If I was doing a highlight of things that have happened in my videos, that has got to be up there. That really has. So the field is Michael Schumacher, Heifeld, Raikkonen. That was the guy who I think got by the stricken Ralph Schumacher who I forgot was there. Raikkonen nearly losing it, actually. So he really is pushing hard. Montoya, fourth. His car's still going for now. Massa is now back into fifth, just through to, just through sheer circumstance, through Barrichello flipping, and um, and of course Ralph Schumacher breaking down. He's back into fifth, and Coulthard went really wide going to the source, so he's now been passed by Jensen Button. I mean, this has got to be the best five-lap race ever on YouTube, surely. I mean, we know in F1 games, five-lap races they're just quick, silly little things normally. This has not been a quick, silly little thing. This has been the most entertaining race I've ever seen, or got to, it's got to be one of. I mean, this is just... I've got no words for it. Absolutely no words. Um, one thing I'm... Yeah, okay, Heifeld is still in second. The McLaren, I genuinely... Something I've just thought of this race is that the McLaren, I'm pretty certain it's got good... It's got good raw speed, because he's... Keeping ahead of Montoya, I mean, he's been caught up slightly, but I think the problem with the McLaren is it just can't overtake anyone. That's the issue. I mean, Raikkonen and Coulthard. I think the only time they overtook quickly really was um, Hungary and Monaco. Well, Monaco didn't really overtake quickly, but they overtook surprisingly quickly. But Michael Schumacher, the luckiest guy in Formula 1. I don't care. I mean, France, this... Michael Schumacher, he's got to be the quickest guy in Formula 1. He's got to be the luckiest as well, as he's going to win the Belgian Grand Prix. And wins here today. He'll be rewarded with a full 10 points for his Drivers' Championship campaign. Well, James Allen, I'm going to cut you off there. Heifeld is in second. Montoya? Did Montoya pass Raikkonen on the line? We can't see that. We'll have to just have to see the race results. But I don't know who finished ahead of Montoya or Raikkonen. Coulthard is in 5th, and Massa 6th, so oh, we missed lots of action further down the points actually near the end. But I believe Coulthard finished ahead of Massa, and Button, so Button dropped behind Massa again. Anyway, Yano truly missed out on all the action, so did both Jaguars of Della Rosa, and Irvine, Sato's away down, so is McNish, Irvine, Villeneuve, Frenson, who to all intents and purposes isn't there, Sarlo, Bernoldi, Mark Webber, and is Anthony Davidson. There we go. We'll just wait for him to cross the line. Well, honestly, I think I summed it all up in the race commentary. I have done some videos on this channel. F1 Manager, the F1 Championship Edition Reverse Grid Race Series, my videos on R-Factor. They have produced some chaos. I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. This has got to be one of, if not the most hectic race I've done. I've made about 250 videos. All in all for YouTube, that has got to be up there in terms of pure racing action. That was just ridiculous. But also, as we saw there, Michael Schumacher, he's quick. There's no denying his speed, both in real life and in this game. There is no denying Michael Schumacher's speed, but he's so, so lucky. France, he was gifted first when his brother broke down. The same thing happened again here. I mean, and then his brother also accidentally and completely inadvertently took out... Barrichello, which is also Michael Schumacher's nearest championship rival. Easy peasy, 
So on to the Drivers' Championship. So the basic rundown is Nick Heidfeld was on 11 points, having scored 6 here, he's overtaken Trulli, Raikkonen and Coulthard to move up into 7th place. David Coulthard was in 7th, but he's been overtaken by his teammate, as while Coulthard scored 1 point, Raikkonen has scored 4. Below that, the other change is that Felipe Massa, because he scored 2 points here, has overtaken Heinz Held Frentzen and Mika Salo in the Drivers' Championship. And also, one thing to note, Michael Schumacher could mathematically lose the Drivers' Championship. There's 3 races left, which means 30 points that a driver could score. 30 points, Michael Schumacher is only leading by 29 points. So on to the Constructors' Championship, and the inevitable has finally happened. Ferrari have won the Constructors' Championship in this 2002 Reverse Grid Race Series. They have won 135 points, the nearest team to them is Williams on 82 points. There's only 48 points a team can score in the remaining 3 races and Williams are more than 48 points behind, so Ferrari have won the Constructors' Championship. Williams are now quite a way ahead of Jaguar, so Jaguar, they're going to need the results that they had in the earlier part of this season if they want to catch back up to Williams. Um, McLaren scored 5 points here, so you know they did quite well all in all. They were outscored by Sauber, but they're still 10 points ahead. And speaking of Sauber, they did overtake Renault as a result of this race. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and to be honest, I reckon you probably did. Even if you hated everything else about this video, the racing action, the 5 lap race that we saw, was absolutely remarkable. And the next race is at Italy, and I'm sure Ferrari would love to have won the Constructors' Championship at the Italian Grand Prix, but Michael Schumacher can, and almost certainly will, win the Drivers' Championship in Italy, and the Tifosi will go mad for that, so it can, in another way, be an absolute fairy tale story for Ferrari. So I'll see you then.